Before we start the podcast, we wanted to let you know about WestOS. If you're a teacher or pupil at a school in Scotland, then you now have access to hundreds of quality assured video lessons created by teachers to support your remote learning. You should be able to find WestOS within the app library of Glow, where you can add the tile to your own personal launchpad. Click on the tile and you'll have immediate access to stream lessons in every area of the Scottish curriculum, with video lessons already available for biology at National 5, Higher and Advanced Higher. Now let's get on with the podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Lecky Textbooks, Revision Guides and Practice Papers, everything you need to learn, review and prepare for your senior phase assessments. Browse the books at www.leckyscotland.co.uk and get 40% off using the discount code LECKYPODCAST40. We're thrilled by the overwhelming support for our episodes featuring top-notch experts delving into various biological realms. Thanks to the feedback from higher biology students, we're launching shorter, punchy revision episodes. Get ready for quick summaries of key areas to turbocharge your exam prep. These short episodes can support your exam preparation and are not intended to replace other important aspects of your revision. Evolution involves the changes in organisms over generations as a result of genomic variations. Evolution hinges on three key factors, gene transfer, selection and speciation. Let's break down each of these components. Genes can be transferred through horizontal or vertical gene transfer mechanisms. With vertical gene transfer, genes are passed from one generation to the next. Genes can be transferred vertically from parent to offspring as a result of sexual or asexual reproduction. With horizontal gene transfer, genes can be transferred horizontally from cell to cell within the same generation. Prokaryotes can exchange genetic material horizontally, resulting in faster evolutionary change than in organisms that only use vertical transfer. Antibiotic resistance in bacteria can arise through horizontal gene transfer. Prokaryotes and viruses can transfer sequences horizontally into the genomes of eukaryotes. So for example, some viruses such as herpes or HIV can transfer their DNA horizontally into the genome of their host cell. Now let's take a wee look at selection. Natural selection is the cornerstone of evolution. It's the process by which certain traits become prevalent in a population over time due to their advantageous nature. Natural selection is the non-random increase in frequency of DNA sequences that increase survival and the non-random decrease in frequency of deleterious or harmful sequences. This ensures that only those organisms which have the favourable alleles suited to survival live, reproduce and pass on these alleles to their offspring. Individuals without the favourable alleles or those with deleterious alleles die before reaching reproductive age and so the frequency of those alleles decreases. The changes in genotype frequency can be the result of natural selection having a stabilising, directional or disruptive effect. Natural selection has a stabilising effect when the average phenotype is selected for and extremes of the phenotype range are selected against. This leads to reduced genetic diversity and incurs an unchanging environment. Human birth weight is a good example of stabilising selection, because tiny babies are prone to disease and die, while very large babies create difficulties during birth, so the average weight is selected for. When natural selection has a directional effect on phenotype frequency, one extreme of the phenotype range is selected for. It favours a less common version of a characteristic and alters the population's mean for a trait. An example of directional selection can be seen in peppered moths. The peppered moth, typically white with black speckles, evolved through directional selection 
due to environmental changes caused by industrialisation. Initially in clean rural areas, the pale form was prevalent due to better camouflage against lichen-covered trees. However, urbanisation and pollution favoured the black, melanic form as it blended better with soot-covered surfaces caused by the industrialisation of the 19th century. Over time, the black moths became dominant in cities. With pollution controls, however, cleaner environments favoured the return of the pale form. This example illustrates how natural selection can drive changes in populations in response to shifting environmental pressures. When natural selection has a disruptive effect on phenotype frequency, two or more phenotypes are selected for, normally at the expense of intermediates. This leads to the population being split into two or more distinct groups with two or more new means being created. In some animal populations like lobsters, disruptive selection leads to fascinating dynamics in male mating strategies. Imagine a lobster community where large dominant alpha males reign supreme, using brute force to secure mates. Meanwhile, smaller males have evolved a sneaky tactic. They slide into the alpha male's territory to mate with females unnoticed. Surprisingly, both the big bruisers and the cunning small males thrive as they successfully pass on their genes. However, medium-sized males caught between these extremes struggle to compete and are selected against. This example showcases how disruptive selection can drive the evolution of diverse mating strategies within a single population, ensuring survival for the boldest and the most cunning individuals. Now many candidates struggle to explain how natural selection is involved in the evolution of bacterial populations which are resistant to antibiotics. Remember that resistance starts as a mutation which is selected for and so spreads quickly through populations. Speciation is the formation of new biological species through evolution, typically due to isolation, mutation and selection. Now remember, a species is a group of organisms which can successfully interbreed to produce fertile offspring. Isolation barriers have an essential role in speciation since they prevent gene flow between subpopulations. If the isolation barrier is geographical, so for example a desert, a river or a mountain range, this leads to allopatric speciation. To illustrate the concept of allopatric speciation, picture this. Ancestral finches living on mainland Ecuador take flight to the enchanting Galapagos Islands. But as fate would have it, they become separated from their mainland relatives, leading to them being isolated. Within these isolated populations, mutations start popping up, each influenced by the varied environments and food sources across the different islands. Natural selection steps in, favouring certain beach shapes that are best suited for survival in their specific habitats. Fast forward millions of years and we witness the breathtaking outcome, a radiant diversity of finch species each finely tuned to its own ecological niche. If the isolation barrier is behavioural or ecological, this leads to sympatric speciation. Let's take behavioural first. A population may carry out complex mating rituals that may create a barrier to reproduction. Different timings, locations or mating dances may result in members of a population who are not geographically separated not being able to mate with one another. Now, ecological, although groups are not geographically isolated from each other, they may be isolated by occupying different habitats, breeding areas, or having a different pH or salinity. Finally, within the higher biology course, we need to understand the stages in evolution of a species. It begins with a large population who interbreed and share a common gene pool. Then, due to an isolation barrier, that large population is split into different subpopulations and different mutations occur in each of these subpopulations. 
Some of these mutations may be favourable and the DNA sequences resulting from them increase survival. Natural selection occurs due to selection pressures, whether that's environmental change or the introduction of a predator or or a disease. And those with favourable DNA sequences survive and reproduce. That increases the frequency of these sequences. Those without the favourable sequences or those with harmful sequences die. Over many generations, they become genetically different and can no longer interbreed to produce fertile offspring. Two different species are formed. So there you have it, a brief overview of evolution and its mechanisms. From gene transfer to selection pressures and the formation of new species, evolution shapes the diversity of life on Earth. But remember this, evolution isn't just a theory. It's the epic saga of life itself unfolding over billions of years. From the tiniest microbes to the grandeur of humanity. Evolution shapes every aspect of our world. So hit subscribe on whatever platform you get your podcasts so you don't miss the rest of our short summary episodes nor our regular episodes with leading experts. And remember, this quick summary is intended as just one element of your broader revision plan. There are lots of resources available via Glow such as Scholar or West OS, as well as BBC Bite Size. Or why not check out one of Lecky's great revision books and use the code LECKYPODCAST40 to get 40% off on their website www.leckyscotland.co.uk. Thank you.